Hey guys, Matt Allen here. Welcome back to Tactical Bass. And we all know that A-Rig fishing is a great way to catch a big bass in the late winter and the pre-spawn. But how do you actually get from an A-Rig in the package to catching big fish on an A-Rig? Today, I'm gonna to take you through the entire process. We're going to build a couple of rigs, look at the gear that we use, and then talk about where these fish are and how to catch them. The A-Rig is an amazing way to catch big bass. When the rig hit the market, we didn't see it coming, the fish didn't see it coming, nobody knew the power that that rig was going to have. Taking a school of fish, imitating an entire school of fish, triggers a different reaction in a bass than a single lure does. Uh, it just does an amazing job of fooling those fish. But the A-Rig itself, is pretty complicated. Fishing it has a cadence to it. There's a, there's a right and a wrong way to do it. It's the same thing with building an A-Rig. So we've done a ton of videos lately where we're fishing a rig. The rig is being thrown around, we're catching fish on it, but it's one thing to see a built out rig hanging in a fish's mouth. It's something entirely different when you get on Tackle Warehouse or walk into a tackle shop and you buy one of these, and now you have this and you're trying to get from here to catching fish. Obviously there are some steps in between. So we're backing it up a little bit here today and we're going to look at exactly how to build some of these rigs. We'll walk you through the components, we'll talk here, and then I'll give you some very specific advice as we transition through late winter into the pre-spawn on where these fish should be and how you can use an A-Rig to catch them. So starting off, let's talk about building rigs. There are a handful of things you need. So when you purchase an A-Rig, you get your rig. There are some other components that you need along with that if you want to catch fish. The rig in the package has no hooks, so you need hooks. The way we build them, you need a couple of other components. Obviously you need some sort of swim bait. Something needs to go on that rig, but you also need CPS springs and hyperwire split rings. So what we do when you get a rig, let's, uh, let's just jump in here. This little guy, this is a flash mob junior. We throw a couple different styles of rig. This is the main rig that I throw. This is a hog farmer, BFL flex rig. Let me get this out. This is the primary rig that I fish with, but we also throw rigs that have no blades at all. Okay. The flash mob junior is like a, a budget rig, fairly stout wire. Um, the components could, could use some improvement but it's still a great rig. It's got a lot of fish on it. I've had people on my boat catch double digits on it and it, it saves some money. So the Flash Mob Junior versus a no blade versus a really good, strong quality rig. We're going to walk through all of them. But the first thing that you do with any rig is you need to get it bent properly. Then we'll talk about how we change out hardware and why we use different pieces. So the Flash Mob Junior is actually easy. Coming out of the package, it's already sort of pre-bent. So let me get the rubber band off here. They've actually done a pretty decent job of it right there coming out the gate. So I'll bend these a little bit further. Just a little bit of a roll to that wire. You don't wanna make a harsh bend, but here's the biggest thing. When they were pre-bent from the factory, notice that they didn't bend them coming right out of the head. This is a wire bait, no different than a buzz bait or a spinner bait, any of those baits that we grew up with. If you flex them and flex them and flex them, eventually the wires are going to get weaker and they are going to break. I don't care if you bought the cheapest rig that you could find or you bought the fanciest, highest end rig that you can get. Eventually, if you are catching a ton of fish on them, they will wear out and break. That's just, it's a wire bait. So know that. The better the components, the longer they will last. But you always in the back of your mind need to be thinking, 
when is it time to retire this rig? Because you want to retire it before it costs you a giant fish, right? If you're throwing a crankbait and you've caught 150 fish on it and you've rebent your hooks 15 times, you know I'm gonna lose a fish. Well, these are no different, right? You know once they're worn out, eventually they'll fail. But if you want to extend their life, don't kink the wire. So coming out of the head, the biggest mistake I see people make is they get a rig like this, where it comes out of the package, and there's no shape to it. And they just grab a wire and bend that thing down and they kink it right at the head. And that will shorten the life of that rig tremendously. Okay, so let's bend another one. This is a hog farmer. This is the main rig that I throw. This is going to be my center wire here. So on this BFL flex rig, there are three wires that have blades, two wires that don't, okay? The two wires that don't, those are my belly wires. Those are the ones that go down. So I'm gonna take each one and I'm gonna bend them. Now what I do is I come about mm, a little more than a quarter inch behind the head and that's where I start my bend, okay? And then I'll take each one and I wanna bend them. Ultimately, it's going to look a lot like this. So my bottom two wires get bent down and out. My middle wire stays straight. My top wires get bent up and out. And they've got to be the same. They have to match. If they don't match, your rig will run off. Now, if you're in a state like, what, Georgia, Alabama, Texas, I could be mistaken, but I believe those are all states that allow five hooks. Not all states do. Um, we've always lived in states that don't. The states I've lived in allow three hooks. Some states allow less than that. But I'm gonna show you how to set up a three hook rig because you can fish it in almost every state. So your state will say that you can't have five hooks and a lot of people interpret that as I can't throw an A rig. That's not correct. You need to know how many hooks you can put on a rig you put those on and then the rest are dummy baits, okay? They're baits that don't have hooks. So that is how you meet regulation. So we fish a three wire rig, even in states that allow five wire. But if you're in a five hook state, I said five wire, I meant five hook. If you're in a five hook state, you can take these and you just bend them all out, four of them out equally, straight one in the middle, put hooks on all of them, you're done. Very, very simple. But if you're in a state where you can't do that, here's what we do. So your bottom two are getting bent down and out. And again, the reason why I went on that tangent is that if you bend them incorrectly and they're not balanced, so see, I'm a little more than a quarter inch back. And I don't just kink them. They've got a little bit of shape to them as I make that bend. My middle one is going to stay straight. These other two that have blades on them, these are for the dummies. I'll kink them up. And again, they have to be the same because if they're not, when I'm running this thing through the water, that rig will want to turn, it'll roll. And if you're in a five hook state and it rolls, well now they just eat this bait and it's got a hook in it. But if you're in Tennessee, if you're in California, if you're in all of the other states that allow less than five hooks, if you turn your rig and a bait that doesn't have a hook is down, that's the one they'll eat and you'll be missing fish. So it's very important that the rig stay balanced, okay? I'll bend these a little more, a little more to the side. Yep. All right. So I fish it like this. I like that rig where my three are pretty wide. Those three are going to get hooks. These two are going to get dummy baits. 
they're going to get no hook. So they already have these springs on them. So all you do is just take the baits and screw them right on. In fact, let's just do that. Let's start right there. Now, we'll jump into swim baits, but let's talk about the dummy baits first. You can have your swim baits and your dummy baits, so the baits with hooks and the baits without, can be the exact same if you want them to be. But what I do is I use a smaller bait for my dummy baits. So it's a smaller bait that's sitting up higher and out in front. You'll see when we're done. So this little guy is called a little spanky. It's from net bait. The other one that I use is reaction innovation skinny dipper. Sometimes I'll just, I'm sorry, not the skinny dipper. That's the big one. The reaction innovations little dipper. It's the small version of a skinny dipper. So I'm starting with this one because out of the package, it's basically ready. It's easy. We're not changing a lot of components. When we get to that flash mob junior, we're going to have to do all sorts of cutting and chopping and redesigning. And you need to know how to do that. This one's pretty basic. The springs were already in place. So there's my dummy baits. Now we'll just put our three hooks on. Now, this rig comes with pretty good snaps. A lot of people just fish those snaps, but we don't. Uh, well, I say we don't. Sometimes when I'm being really lazy, I do. But generally, we change them out, especially if I think there's even a shot that I'm gonna be around really big bass. I change every one of them. So what I did is I just cut that snap off of there. So on the top two, there were springs. On the bottom three, there are snaps. And again, on this hog farmer, they're good quality snaps. A lot of people will just fish them. But we want these rigs just bulletproof. And across the board, snaps have the ability to open. Better quality snaps open less. It's far more likely, or it's far less likely that you're going to have a problem, but it can still happen. So I just eliminate any possibility of a problem personally because rigs catch big bass. They catch double digits, they catch giants. My biggest fish on an Alabama rig is a 13 pound fish. I don't want anything going wrong if a fish of that caliber eats this thing. So I go over and above and I build my rig out properly. So you still want to leave the swivel. That's important. If you cut that swivel off by accident, you're kind of done for. So leave the swivel. Let me cut these other two real quick. It's a lot quicker when I'm just doing it. I'm not talking through it. All right, that one and this one. Okay, so there's three swivels still in place. Snaps are gone. Owner hyperwire number four. The reason why is that they're strong and they're consistent and they're forgiving. So you can use any split ring, but some split rings leave you in just as bad or a worse position than the snaps. These hyper wires are strong, they're consistent. So this is a Matt Allen swim bait head. This is my head. That's the main head that we throw with a rig. If I'm around spotted bass or smallmouth, I'll drop down. Let me show you. I had two sitting here. Now this is a big Matt Allen head, so a big hook, right? But this is a tactical finesse head. See the difference in those hooks? Huge difference. So if I'm around largemouth, 100% of the time I'm throwing that Matt Allen head on the A-rig. But if I'm around smallmouth or spotted bass, and I know there's like there's a bit of a size cap, I'm not catching bigger than a three or four pounder then I switch over and I throw that tactical finesse because I can drop to lighter line. I can throw a little bit smaller bait. I get a really good hookup on them. Even if I'm throwing straight fluoro, it just works really well. But if there's a possibility that a giant's going to eat, I want that heavy wire hook. So three Matt Allen heads here, three owner hyper wires, Texas tackle split ring pliers, these are my favorite. So we'll just do this quick. I'll talk a little less and I'll work a little more so you can see how fast this can actually go. 
One done. The second one. Here comes the third one. Now these are all one eighth ounce. That is by far my main size for any A rig. Like if you just tell me build an A rig, I don't even ask to put eighth ounce heads on it. The only time that I switch that out is if we're going to be fishing really deep water. And even then, I always start with eighth ounce. So if that water's really deep and you don't want to go slow, because I could take eighth ounce heads and fish them in 50 feet of water, but you've got to go really slow. Sometimes speed matters. You want to speed that thing up. Then putting a heavier head on the middle wire, you know, going to a three eighths or to a half, super deep water, even to a three quarter, just on that middle head will help that rig stay down better. And you can fish it faster, draw more of a reaction strike. Okay, turn that guy around, make sure he's free. There they are, it's that simple. Now, normally we put three 4.8 Kitex on. That's our standard rig is going to be either a little dipper or those little spankies on my tops and then 4.8 Kitex on my bottom. Now lately here on Chickamauga, I've been throwing a little bit smaller baits. So I'm actually going to use these when we're done building them. So I'm gonna put a 4.3 on my middle, 3.8 on the outsides. These are Kitex, 4.3 with two 3.8s, okay? Then there's another swim bait I've been playing with as well. The last two videos, the fish I've been catching were on this, this little 13 guy, it's called a churro. And uh, we'll get to that one, we'll do it on the next rig. So you just thread these guys on, it's really important you thread them straight. Critical. Otherwise, they'll run a little bit off. And again, anything on a rig that is running a little off will turn a rig. And if you don't have hooks on every bait and you turn a rig, those fish always eat the baits that are the lowest and the farthest back on the rig, always. So if you flip a rig upside down, the wrong ones are on the bottom and they will get eaten. So it's really important that you take your time, you put them on straight one time. Kitex are really soft. You start fiddling with them, trying to redo them, they'll tear them up, they're no good. You won't even catch a fish on them before they're jumped. So this rig is just about complete. Again, I'm gonna show you why we set it up this way and how important it is. You can really visualize it once it's put together. There it is. So look at this, this is the bottom, okay? My biggest bait is the farthest back. My second largest baits, my other hooked baits, are out to the sides. My dummy baits are on top. So as this thing comes through the water and it's passing a fish, any fish that comes in to approach this rig, whether they shoot from the side, whether they come from the back, whether they come from the bottom, will always, and I mean always, I'm talking like I may only have one or two fish in an entire year eat one of these guys. It's that consistent. They always eat the hooked baits. So I can go to a state that is a five hook state with a three hook rig and catch the exact same number of fish. I have zero concerns about that, zero. They will always eat a hooked bait when it's set up properly. Now this is really important. I told you that middle wire needs to be straight. In the past, I would bend those down a little bit, but this one has a blade on it 
that one has to be on a straight wire for that blade to spin properly. So it's really important that you don't take that one and kink it down. It will mess it up because you're not kinking it down far enough for it to really track right. So it'll screw that blade up and you'll have a blade in here that's not really turning. But if you leave it straight, it's like an inline spinner and it'll just whip around there perfectly and you're all set up. So that's the Hog Farmer BFL Flex Rig. This is the main rig that I turn to. Now let's take that Flash Mob Junior. Smaller rig, pretty basic, but still functionally solid. First thing we're going to do, actually, I'm gonna set this down for a second. I wanna show you one other thing first because I know I'm gonna forget if I don't. We'll come right back to building this one. I wanna show you a second way to bend your wires because this is actually more reliable. It lasts longer. So I bend my wires like this, or I actually put some shape to them. There is an even better way to do it but you've got to do it perfectly. So I do that, even though I know that you can do this, I do that because if you don't do it exactly right, again, that rig will turn on you. But if you want the absolute best longevity out of your rig, do you see how I bent these wires? Where there's no kink, they're just rolled to the side. I bent a couple of my left one. So this one in here is still a straight wire. And this is one of my up wires. So the way you do this, you take your thumb, we're not going to kink it at all. We're going to roll that wire all the way through the wire, just like it was on a spool of wire, right? When you buy wire, it comes in a roll. It gets its shape over distance. There's no kink whatsoever. So if you really, really want to get technical with your rigs, that is actually stronger and will last longer than kinking them at all, even when you kink them properly. But again, when you do it this way, it's really easy for one to get off a little bit and it will, it will turn that ring. So if you're going to do this, you need to practice because they need to be perfect. Just roll over distance to get your exact shape. And they will last longer, but it'll take some getting used to to do it. So it's much, much easier. I can just mindlessly do it this way. Don't even think about it. I'm in good shape and it lasts 50 times longer than kinking them coming out of the head. So this is sort of the compromise between the two. That's your very best. Kinking them coming out of the head is horrible. This is in the middle and will catch a ton of fish without failing and is really easy to do. But I did want to show you all of the options. So you really know what you can and can't do. So back to the Flash Mob Junior. This is a more basic rig. There are a lot of basic rigs that you're going to treat the exact same way. So it comes with, I mean, I, I don't want to bash it. I don't want to say terrible hardware, but it, it comes with hardware that I'm not comfortable hooking a giant bass on. Okay. So on the tops, every, every single wire has a snap, and a swivel. On the top two, I'm gonna take them off completely. On the bottom three, I'm leaving the swivels. So here we go, the top two, I cut the actual swivel and take the swivel and the snap off. So it leaves me with the bare wire loop. Bottom three, I'm cutting the snap and leaving the swivel. Because again, the bottom three are the ones that are getting hooks and my hooked baits need a swivel so that they can, they can move a little and they can track correctly. So now we've stripped it down. It's really a quick process. 
These are bare wire. These three have swivels. Now we're right back where we were, except we're adding a step. This is an owner CPS spring, and it's the middle size, the medium size, okay? Let me grab, there's one, let me grab another. So we've got two CPS springs. That little guy will just screw right onto that rig. You gotta kind of pop it on there at the end. Come on. Come on here. Almost on. How did I manage to bugger that up? Do it a thousand times. I've never gotten one stuck like that. Go figure. Let me back it up. We'll do it again. All right. All right. I managed to loop it through twice. Never done that. Should be much, much, much easier. Like this. Done. So two springs that are just hanging there. And again, those are going to get the dummy baits. And my dummy baits, I really don't care what color they are. Really doesn't matter. You just don't want it to be an obnoxious color. Their purpose is just to be a part of the rig, add the appearance of more minnows in the school, but don't look so perfect, don't look the right size, so that they don't get eaten. So just choose a natural-ish color, something sort of similar to the rest of your baits. This is albino, it's just a good all-around color. Same with those little dippers, any of the kind of the smoke colors, just natural. They're part of the school, but you don't want them getting bit. So those are in place, and then we're right back where we were. Matamon swim bait heads, one eighth ounce. We got three of those. Three hyperwire number fours. Let's go quicker this time, and then we'll talk about those. Actually, let's talk about the swim baits. So I just told you that I've been playing with a new bait. This is a, it's 13 fishing. This little guy, it's called a churro, but it's crazy soft. I mean like soft, soft, I could just ball it up. And I noticed, because our water out here is in the low 40s right now, and sometimes the fish just want to chase a bait down. Actually, I only need two of those. Sometimes the fish just want to chase a bait down, and sometimes they don't. They just don't want to run after it. So I noticed that these baits, because I've been fishing really slow, like slower than normal. Just crawling that rig and then popping it. Crawling and popping. And I've noticed that these guys have a really consistent kick at that ultra slow speed. So I've been running a Kitek as my center bait and then two of those 13s on the sides. And I've been landing, like in the last couple of videos, the fish that I was landing had eaten the 13. They had chosen that one. They came up to eat. They ate those outside baits. Um, so I've been playing with that a lot more. So I'll rig these up on these heads and we'll get it all put together. All right, that guy, two of these. These guys are a little skinnier. You really want to be careful and do it one time. Even if you miss by a little, don't back that thing up. That will mess them up. Okay, last one. A 
Okay, three baits are ready. So, all these baits are oiling now, my fingers are all slippery. Hyper wires going on. Oop. I'm slippery. Okay, and the last one. So with these rigs, the two that I'm building out right now, <laughs> my fingers are oily. The two that I'm building out right now are bladed, but we throw bladed and non-bladed, right? Essentially, if there's a lot of bait fish present in the water, so when you're actually out there, there's schooling minnows around, always bladed, always start there. Because the blades just create a bigger profile. That's all they do. They help attract attention. They help get the fish to look at you instead of all the minnows that are around. It just creates a bigger profile with more going on. But if there's not big schools of bait fish around, or if your water's really clear, or if a lot of other people are throwing an A-rig. Boy, there are days where that unbladed rig, just plain wires, are just incredible. I mean, they are so good. So much better than bladed. So I always have both with me. I build out at least a couple of each, And I've always got them. I try both, figure out what those fish are eating. All right, so here we've taken a less expensive rig, a more basic rig, but really built it out properly. So same deal, dummies on top, 3.8 Kitec in the middle, a couple of those 13 churros on the sides. I'm gonna adjust that baby, it's looking a little funny. So I'm gonna push it down, try and get it to sit right. And it is. If it wasn't, you can rip it a little bit from the back. That's a lot better than trying to back that hook out and readjust. You'll end up tearing the inside of that bait and it won't last very long. It's a lot easier to make your adjustment from the backside afterwards. But 13s on the outside, Kitec in the middle, dummies on top, and that rig will fish. You've taken a budget rig and made it perfect. Now it will not last anywhere near as long as this guy but it will last plenty long to catch a giant bass. So that's building the rigs. Now, again, if you were fishing five hooks, if you're in a state that you can do that, you get one of these rigs that's set up for five. You could either clip them on or change out all five to hyper wires, put your heads on, and you just bend them out equally. One straight, four bent out around it, all the same baits, it does not matter which one they eat because they've all got hooks. Super simple. But this is how you take a rig from the package and make it fishable. Now let's talk about the actual rig fishing. I'll link all of these components, every single one of them, down in the video description. Our favorite rigs will be laid out, the exact split rings, the exact heads, the weights of the heads, which swim baits we use and why. I'll break all that down for you with favorite colors and everything to make it really simple. We want you guys to get out there on the water and catch fish, not be sitting at home struggling and then getting out there and wondering if you even did it right. That's what this video is about. A lot of times we're out there fishing, you're seeing the fish catches, but you're not seeing how we got from A to B. So this hopefully fills in that gap for you. Now, the actual fishing, here we are in winter. Towards the end of winter, because it's always amazing this time of year, it'll be the heart of winter. We were out a couple of days ago fishing with some buddies and it was blizzarding on us. I mean, dumping snow just a couple days ago. 
But I'll tell you what, it, in a blink of an eye, it's pre-spawn. Because it's pre-spawn way before it's actual springtime. Those fish just switch gears and immediately they're feeding, they're more aggressive, they're bulking up going towards the spring and it's coming quick. So right now, when you get out on the water with an A-Rig and you want to catch these fish, now cadence is important. You see, when we fish these rigs, we don't just steady retrieve them. We throw them out, you're rolling, and then we pump that rod twice or snap that reel twice. And what that does, it gets that whole rig to open and close. And if a fish is following, if they were following real minnows and those real minnows panicked, they split up, they, they break out to try and get away, but they're safety in numbers, so they'll come back together. So when you do that with your rig and that thing opens up and comes back together and opens again, that fish knows that it's busted by that school of minnows. And if it's going to eat them, it needs to do it now. So it'll lash out and eat right on those twitches. Right when you do that, boom, there's the fish. So that's why you see us doing that with a rod. As far as where to throw it, late winter, you're seeing us fishing a lot of outside structure. We're focused around rock. So the ends of arms, where arms come out and meet your main lake, we'll fish right on those deep edges if it's rocky. We'll fish high spots. So essentially we're fishing pinch points and we're fishing access to deep water. One of those places is where those arms come and meet the main lake. Okay, a lot of fish will back out of an arm and they'll set up right there. So if you can find a rocky corner, if you can find a rocky point, where it's breaking into deep water quickly, they'll sit there. If there's a hump, if there's an offshore hump in that same general zone, they'll set up on those in the winter time. If they don't have that, they'll just back out to deeper water. You know, if your lake doesn't have a lot of contour, fairly flat banks that just sort of come out, if there's a creek channel, they'll sit on that roll off. If it just comes out to deep water, they'll sit out in the deepest part of the hole whether that's 15 feet deep or 60 feet deep, they'll just back out and sit in the belly of the hole. We call that a hollow and they'll just sit out there. And you can throw that rig out, let it go all the way to bottom, pop it up and then just start a slow roll even down in those hollows and you'll catch those fish. But very soon, this will transition to pre-spawn. If you're farther south than we are, you might already be there. If you're farther north, you've got a longer wait. You know, guys in Florida, they're catching bedfish. Um, although it got a little bit colder here recently, but it transitions up the country. So some people are already pre-spawn. As soon as it gets pre-spawn, as soon as those fish start feeding, they start moving up. And not only up, they're moving back into those backwater areas. So you're going to find those same fish that were down deep on the edges of that structure right up on top. First thing they'll do is they'll pull up shallower. All of a sudden, you were rolling down the side of a point in 15 or 18 feet to get your bite. You make a bad cast and it lands up there in four foot and wham, you get bit. That's not random. That fish had moved up. That's a signal that the mood is changing, that the transition is beginning. Those fish, if you take that and you start running it on other spots where you've been catching fish, fish shallower and it repeats, if you catch another shallow one, okay, you know it's go time now. So what those fish will do is they'll start moving up those arms. And we'll get way more in depth on this in a video really soon about exactly how these fish move in a highland reservoir, a lowland reservoir, and a river system, and a pond. We'll cover all that. This is just cliff notes for you with an A-Rig. As those fish start moving back into those areas to repopulate those backwaters and those coves, They'll move down the secondary points. They go from primary structure to primary structure. So if you look down an arm, you know, and maybe it's half a mile to the back of the cove, and there's behind you is the big point between there and the main lake. That's a primary point. That's a main lake point. But as you look back up the cove, there's those little points coming in on the sides. Those are secondary points. That's where those fish are headed. They're going to point hop up those secondaries ultimately working their way to the back to spawn. If you look at those secondaries, the ones with the best structure, the ones that have good rock, 
one that has a lay down tree on it, right? Something that makes it different. That's where you want to put your time in. Start out fishing shallow. If they're not there, fish a little deeper, fish a little deeper until you find them. But this time of year is really about running pattern. So if you find them in 15 feet of water, when you go to the next one, go straight to 15 feet of water. It's amazing how much you can repeat over and over and over. They won't usually be in four foot on one point, 20 foot on the next point, and 10 foot on the next. If they're in four foot here, they're in four foot there, they're in four foot back there. So you can really create a pattern, save yourself a ton of time, fish that A-rig aggressively, throw it out, wind it back with those eight ounce heads. You can throw that thing dirt shallow and wind it. I mean, it'll fish in a foot or two of water, or you can slow down and you can get it to fish really comfortably in five to 15 feet of water. Or you can do what I've been doing lately, go into those baits that are a little bit softer and just really slow rolling it and they'll continue to kick even in that cold water. And then of course, if it's really deep and you know you're staying deep, you just go to a bigger head, way bigger profile for that middle one and that'll help you stay down. But it's that simple guys, A-rig fishing, getting from package to catching fish is not complicated once you've seen it done. You need split rings. If you're buying a cheaper rig that doesn't already have springs on it, you need springs. You need some swim bait heads and you need some swim baits. Now you know how to build them. As far as rod, I've actually got a rod sitting here in my office. I, went, I didn't even put this in here for this. It was already here, but it's got an A-rig on it. This is my current rig rod. I'm always looking for the best rod for the job. So this is the new Zodius, it's a 7.5 Heavy. This is my rig rod because it's got a longer handle, which I really like when I'm pumping that rig and fishing all day long. But what you're looking for in a rod to throw in a rig at any price is you're looking for a little bit longer rod. So this is a seven foot five. You want it to be stout. You want it to be at least a medium heavy, if not a heavy rod, so that you can really cast hard, work that thing hard. You're not getting overpowered by the rig, um, but you still need a really soft tip section. So there are a lot of rods that can throw a rig and will do an okay job, but finding that balance between a soft tip that will help absorb and then strong backbone and then a longer handle that you can really tuck in that's a little bit tougher combination to find. So this is my current rig setup. It's that Zodius 7.5 Heavy with a Corrado 200K HG. So that's a seven to one. I really like rig fishing on seven to one. Um, a six to one just feels a little bit slow to me. It's fine, but for me, it's a little bit slow. But an eight to one, I feel is way too fast. I do not rig on eight to one. I throw seven to one or six to one, but not eight. When I've thrown an A-rig on eight, I find myself going way too fast by accident. I, I notice because I am catching less fish. I'm like, what is going on? And then I realize, oh, I'm, I'm fishing my normal speed and the eight to one is going too quick. So a seven to one is really key. I'll link my exact A-rig combo. Uh, I'll link that down in the video description as well as long as along with like a budget option. Um, something that will really do a good job on a budget, a strong reel, a good quality rod that will still flex up well and you can save some money. Uh, hopefully this helps you. I've made a mess of it, there's packaging everywhere, uh, but this should help you get out there this spring. The reason why we're doing this now is winter time is A-rig time, but so is the pre-spawn. All spring long, you can smash A-rig fish. So you're far enough into winter that if it's not working out for you, you know that now, right? You've identified the problem. So I wanted you guys to have the time to go out there and experiment with it and try and get it dialed in for yourself. But if it's not working, hopefully this helped you pinpoint your issue, whether that's the place you're fishing, how you were bending your rigs, whatever it might've been. Um, hopefully this helps you dial it in because we've still got months of good A-rig fishing yet to go. Guys, if you enjoyed the video, hit the like button. Subscribe to the channel, and we'll talk to you soon.